I'm super excited for today because not only am I going to go play some live poker at Cash Creek, but I'm going to try recording my hands while I'm playing. So I installed some spy camera apps both on the Android phone that I'm recording on and also on one of my older iPhones. And so I did it on both phones because this one has a straight edge on it. So I think it'll be able to sit right behind the chips on the table just fine and it'll record with a black screen just like this so nobody will know. I'll start recording before I sit down, lay it down, and hopefully it'll be able to get some hands. So yeah, so that's the plan for the day. So uh, let's get in there. Cash Creek Casino is one of the larger Indian casinos in the region. It's a large casino, a hotel, and a golf course. And in fact, it's the one that I used to frequent a lot when I was going to UC Davis as an undergraduate. They used to have a really big poker room in the middle of the casino, and it used to always have a lot of action. But as more and more card rooms emerged and other Indian casinos popped up, the poker has really died out over there. Right now, there's only a 4-8 and two tables of 3-6 going. So I'm hoping that it picks up a little bit, but we'll just see how it goes. Typically, they don't run No Limit there. They really can't get a game of No Limit going there. I don't know why. They don't run 1-2 or 1-3, but they only run 2-4 No Limit, so that's probably why. Can I get on the list for 3-6? Well, that door or this one? Yeah, back there. Back there? Okay, cool. So today's experiment with trying to record my session was a bit of a failure, but then again, it was a bit of an experiment, so I'm fine with it. I'm glad I got at least a few minutes of recorded action in to put into today's vlog, so you can see some of the action that was going on. But unfortunately, the first app I tested out, I thought it would continuously record, but it stopped automatically at five minutes. So I had that one running as I was walking up to the cage and buying in, and so I had it already running with my screen off and everything so I just put my camera down on the rail and I thought it was good to go and so I thought it was recording for like a half hour and then after I got a hand that I finally was able to fold um, because I had lots of hands early in the session where there was lots of action 
I got up, I went to the restroom, I checked the video, and it stopped at five minutes and didn't record a single damn thing of a single hand that I played. So that was kind of irritating. So I switched over to a different app, and that's where you get to see the action near the end of the session, where I wasn't getting any cards, and I was just pretty much folding, or I was just playing in the small blind or the big blind. But yeah, I think I have it figured out now. Um, I thought I would use my iPhone because it has you know, a 90 degree edge and would sit straight, but it doesn't have a good viewing angle. The camera isn't that great, and I don't like the app, so this thing's gone. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use my um, Motorola G3. The thing I don't like about it, it has a bit of a beveled edge, so I have to put this rubber case on it to get it to stick and not fall over on the table or angle up too high because the issue I had is that it was angling too high and wasn't catching my cards. So I have to make sure it's like perfectly angled um, at a 90 degrees so it catches my cards. And I don't want it too high because I don't want to have to blur out everybody like I did in this one. But I think it's going to kind of be an issue, but I think it should be good to go. So I'm going to test it out again tomorrow night. I'm going to play again tomorrow night at Cash, well actually not Cash Creek, but at Thunder Valley because they're running this winter and Christmas promotion all month where on Tuesday and Thursdays they are giving away stuff every hour. So they're running a drawing. Um, they're giving away iPads, laptops, Xbox Ones, cash, you name it. They have all sorts of cool stuff they're giving away. When I was playing there um, about a week ago, the lady that I was sitting next to, she won an iPad and they didn't have it, so they had to order it. So they give her a laptop instead. And I asked her if it was busy, and she said, no, it really wasn't that busy. So I'm going to go play. My dad's going to go play, and hopefully one of us will be lucky enough to get something. If not, I'll go back next week, and hopefully either I'll win or I'll get something. So let's talk about the poker. I don't know. It was pretty basic, pretty standard. Let's talk about the pocket kings first because, I don't know, um, might as well talk about them. I had pocket kings under the gun. I open raise to six. I get multiple callers. I believe we go to the flop at least six or seven ways. And in terms of the flop, it's a pretty low flop with, I believe, a nine high. I believe it was nine, seven, four with two hearts. And I have pocket kings, and I believe I had uh, king of clubs, king of diamonds. So I didn't block any heart draws. I fire out a continuation bet for value. I get called by a few people. Everybody else folds. The turn is a jack. It's not a heart, but it's an offsuit jack. I don't remember what suit it is. So a straight draw does get there, which is something that I'm a bit worried about. But I'm also worried more so about the flush draw getting there on the river. So again, I fire a continuation bet for value. I get called by, I believe, three opponents. Again, and then we go to the river, and unfortunately... A heart rolls off on the river. It was a low heart, but the flush got there. And so me being in under the gun, first to act after the blind. So the big blind's still in the hand. She checks. I check. Another guy checks. And another guy goes all in for his remaining $6. And so everybody else folds, um, folds back around to me. And I call $6 to win something like a 70-something dollar pot with pocket kings. I'm just praying and hoping that he has a jack X hand where he just has top hair. Um, but unfortunately, he turns up ace, queen of hearts. So, I mean, the hand just pretty much played itself out. If I was playing no limit, we probably would have got all in on the flop since he was a short stack. But, you know, whatever, that's poker, right? So I lost that hand. Not a big deal. I mean, I lost um, just over 20-something bucks in that hand. Not really a big deal. Pretty standard. Um, the other couple of hands I got into where I won, I had a suited weak ace under the gun. I believe it was either A6 or A7, and of course the players are terrible and everybody is limping in a super wide range. So of course I play A7 suited under the gun. I just um, limp in for implied odds value for post-flop play. And again, we end up going, er, almost everybody just limps in pre-flop. We end up going to the flop around seven ways. I end up flopping a the nut flush draw with an ace over. So I fire out a semi-bluff on the flop. And I get called by three people. Everybody else folds. The turn, I make the nut flush. Again, I fire out a continuation bet. I get called by three people. And the river's a blank. Again, I fire out a continuation bet. They all call. Actually, two call on the river. I show the nuts, and they muck their hand. I take down a pretty big pot. Um, and then the last hand that I played that I won, I had king eight suited of clubs in the big blind. So big blind special. That's where I ended up making the nut flush last time I played limit. So, of course, it, er, lots of people limp in. I check in the big blind with king eight of clubs. Um, the flop gives me the second of flush draw with an overcard with the king. I don't remember exactly what the cards were. I know they were really low. Um, I believe the top one was either a 10 or a 9. 
Um, the Under the Gun first act bets three dollars, and several people fold. A couple a couple people call, and I call as well with the nut flush drawn and over. The turn is a pretty good turn because it then gives me with the eight. I end up making an open ended straight draw with the second nut flush draw with the king over. So I believe it was six, seven, eight, nine with my eight. Um, so I mean I just have tons of outs there, right? I have 15 outs with the nut flush draw as well as the open end straight draw. Plus I have an over that's gonna win as well if my opponent is just betting top pair. Um, so, I mean, I just have tons of equity. There's no way I'm folding, but I'm not going to lead out. So I check, she bets, one person calls, I call, we go to the river, I make a pair of kings. I check, she bets, the other person folds, I call, she shows up pocket jacks, and I take it down with a pair of kings. Um, and so, yeah, you know, pretty straightforward. I really don't like her. She was in early position. I believe she was in under the gun or under the gun plus one. Um, and I don't like her limping in pocket jacks first to act. I know that the person directly to her right folded. So I think pocket jacks were more than strong enough in limit for her to be open raising. And if she open raised, I probably would have folded. I mean, it would have been close. It depends how many people limped in. Um, but again, I mean, who knows how many more people are going to limp in if she open raises under the gun. But Probably a lot of people would have called her raise if she raised under the gun plus one, simply because when I raised my kings, a lot of people called. Um, but then again, you know, I only saw one opponent's ace queen of hearts, so I don't know how strong or weak their ranges were when they called my raise. And I didn't see anybody else raising pre flop other than me with uh, pocket kings, me in another hand with ace queen. And I saw several people, actually, I saw two different people, her and another person, limp in with pocket jacks pre flop. So People are pretty much limping close to 100% range um, and really not looking to raise preflop, but that's limit. So I ended up winning a small profit of $26. I um, While I was there, I realized the Kings were playing, and so I decided to cut the session short. I played an hour, decided to hit the road because I'm a diehard Kings fan, wanted to watch them play. I come home, and they friggin' lose by 34 points. 34 points. Really? So I left a session just to come watch them play just because I was excited for my team and they lose by 34 points. DeMarcus Cousins is out there arresting him. Rudy Gay is out with the injury. Um, ben McElmore is out with the injury. But they had all the rest They had the rest of the team and they brought two of the rookies back, their first rounders that had been killing it in the D-League. They didn't even play them from what I saw. And they just got crushed and annihilated. And I don't know. I mean... Sucks being a Kings fan. But anyways, that's going to conclude tonight's vlog. If you like tonight's vlog, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you haven't been over to Microgrinder Poker School, please check us out and tell your friends and family as well. All sorts of free and low-cost resources for you, my fellow poker players. And thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, any comments about me filming in the casino, anybody that's actually done it themselves, any sort of suggestions with the phone, let me know. I think I found the solution, but I'm always, you know, I'm always happy to um, get recommendations from you guys too as well. So thanks for watching. Been out with Microgrinder Poker School, and I'll see you at the next video.